This is going to be a review for the TV movie. Now, this has a bit of an interesting history to it. I don't, I don't know how much I'm going, to, I'm going to deep. I don't know how much I'm going to dig into it. It's a big, confusing, really annoying history. I'm going to try and summarize the, some of the more important parts. But here's what, the main thing about this. This was supposed to be... A, this was a backdoor pilot to a new series that was going to be co-produced by the BBC and Fox. You know, Fox, they're so good with science fiction, isn't that right, Firefly? Sorry, I had to let the, the hurt out sometime. Might as well get it out early. Yeah, Fox, you know, the people who brought you the X-Files. That's good. They also brought us Millennium, which got canned. Yeah. Uh, sliders, a bunch of, bunch of other things. Currently, they're running Terra Nova, a show that got beaten the ratings by a rerun of How the Grinch Gold Christmas. Yeah, good, good luck with that. Anyway, this is kind of a interesting synopsis here because um, the story's not that complicated. It's a really easy one. Um, it, the best I can summarize it is it starts with the master getting executed by the Daleks for, I assume, war crimes. They're not even really sure. They just say for his crimes. For all we know, he, his, the crime that got him in trouble was actually taking candy from a baby. Who knows? They don't imply it. Just go with it. So, in his last request was that the doctor take his remains back to the planet Gallifrey. Little do we know, his plan, which, by the way, part of his plan literally meant... Turn myself into snot, because that's what his remains look like. It's a small pile of goo. And sabotage the TARDIS and crash the Doctor. Amongst this, he the TARDIS lands in the middle of an alley where a, where a gang fight's happening. By the way, these gangsters are some of the most nicely dressed gang members ever. These are, seriously, best dressed gang members in television history. And it runs in, it, it, it dematerializes in the middle of the fight. Sylvester McCoy, yes, Sylvester McCoy, walks out, gets shot in the arm. That's not the thing that kills him. He gets taken to the hospital where, amongst a bunch of uh, doctors, he meets Daphne, who will be the, our companion for this movie. They accidentally kill him, thinking that they did not, uh, when they accidentally hit his second heart, for those who don't know, the doctor has two hearts. And simply thinking that it was a pro, that simply thinking, oh well, his heart shouldn't be there. So they went along with it. His he, his body went into cardiac arrest, and he died on the table, where he of course regenerates into Palm again. While this is happening, the ambulance, the uh, not the ambulance, not the ambulance driver, but one of the amb uh, ambulance assistants, Bruce, who brought the doctor to the hospital, thanks to Lee, who is the gay who is one of the gang members who had enough kindness to take to call to call 911 get the doctor to the hospital and then steal all of his things that were on his person yeah we have to follow that kid for a movie anyway Bruce Bruce apparently caught the somehow the master slime that's what I'm gonna call him always like this sneaks in possesses him by turning into a CGI snake monster, possesses him, which for some really weird reason gives him bright green lizard eyes. Um, I don't know, just go with it. So, dressing up like the Terminator, how rare do I get to say that, he finds, he tries to find the Doctor and the TARDIS. He can't find him, seeing that, he's, that he died and the body's gone, because, well, the body walked out. He finds Lee and leads him back to the TARDIS where he goes in and activates the Eye of Harmony using Lee's eyes, since his eyes, for some reason, won't work. With the eye opening, it's causing the world to... I, it's something like the deep, the molecular structure of the world breaking down. It's really goofy techno babble. It doesn't make an ounce of sense, so you're just going to have to go with it. But the Master's plan is simple. Take the Doctor in his remaining regenerations. Which, about here would probably be about five... Uh, five, four or five. 
since he's used up all of his regenerations and, well, also he doesn't even have a Time Lord body anymore, he's possessing a human. One thing that I really wish they did, but they couldn't just because of uh, the actor's allergies, was uh, they were planning on putting prosthetics on him to make it look like his body was decaying from it, which may be, which may look kind of silly as it goes along, but would have at least sold off the idea that he's not, that his body's only temporary, and gives a sense of urgency that there's time here, time of the essence here. Unfortunately, we don't get that, so... So, once the Doctor goes through, goes through his regenerative haze to figure out who he is, we unearth a little about him, we get some nice character acting from him, then him and and then him and Grace go and find the TARDIS, so they have to reset the eye. And of course, they meet up with the Master, who's decided to ditch the Terminator look and look incredibly ridiculous, and just ham up and chew every piece of scenery he has in his wake. Through this, he kills and through this, he of course does the normal mad genius thing. Kills the kills the good guy's companions and almost gets away with it, except for the part where he essentially gets beaten up in a really Smallville-esque convenient way. And because the Eye of Harmony is magic, it brings the two dead companions back to life. Because we can't have death weigh down our character, except for all the other times we've had death weigh down our character. And that's about the summary of the movie. Now. There's some things I left out, but trust me, it's really trivial. The thing about this movie is there's so many small details, but the characters they have delivering these details aren't that fascinating. There's a lot of side characters whose names get mentioned once, and you seriously just don't care about because all they do is tell you... Basically, all they do is point, point to where the next plot convenience is and keep the story going. It's a really clunky story. It it has the pressure of a lot of the of a lot of pre of uh, post regeneration stories, but yet it had to feature both the regeneration the regeneration and the effect after. Sylvester McCoy, who was great enough to come back, even though there was some problems with that. In in this case, there were four real voices on this decision. For one thing, there was uh, Philip Siegel, who was the executive producer on this movie, and if it went to series, was going to be the showrunner. He wanted he wanted to make sure that Paul McGann no 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 that Sylvester McCoy was on hand to replace Paul McGann when the time came, which is cool. However, we ran into a few other things that almost stopped this. The BBC wanted a different doctor, mainly Tom Baker because they wanted a more popular doctor. And also, they were kind of convinced this was going to be a re a complete reboot, which. Really led me to wonder what the hell this one was going to be. Fox didn't even want a regeneration scene. They thought it would confuse the audience. And to be fair, it did. It the concept of regeneration is a tough one to explain. You kind of need to get warmed up to a doctor first, and then start watching him. Essentially, do what the first series does. Just showing regeneration right away would be confusing. They realized this when they made when they were beginning season uh, series one in 05, so they didn't show the regeneration. I'm not gonna say this is a tough thing to swallow, because they do though an offhand dialogue explain how it works, so it makes sense. But it doesn't matter. I'm happy that that McCoy's back. Anyway, th this led to some problems with. This, I, and as I keep repeating, this led a problem to McGann, who, for most of the movie, was in a weird regenerative haze. In the last half hour, he really just starts getting into the role, and he has at least what you think his character is down. There's some controversial parts that I'll get into, so please, bear with me, audience. For one thing, um, there was, a, there was a, a big thing about this was the fact that they said that he was half-human in this. There's no explanation for why he's half-human, and there's no real implications on his character other than... Yeah, there's actually no importance, really, when they mention it. 
if anything, it's just kind of written off and they don't focus on it. I'm sure they may have that went to series, but who knows. Another thing is this doctor, well, kissed a woman. Yes, that sounds incredibly weird to complain about, but it was a big deal. A lot of people don't view the doctor as the romantic type, more as just a weird guy who loves traveling. Eh, I kind of see it, but honestly it added a quirk to him that I really liked, and it's been something that's on display with him in comics and books and audio dramas, so can't really complain about it. And let's move on to the companions. I'm going to sum them up easily. They don't really do too much. Uh, they mostly just kind of listen to him. They're just there to... More, Grace is mostly just there to have the Doctor tell someone what's going on so that can then again be relayed to us since we have no idea what the hell he's going to be talking about. And Lee's just the stupid little pawn who's used by the bad guy because, well, he knows where the TARDIS is. Granted, it's kind of easy to understand why he gets this easily taken advantage of. He's clearly young and not that smart, so... I can't really hate him. That's the thing. I don't hate him or love him. They're just, they were just there. They didn't annoy me, but they didn't wow me. That's not a good thing. So, yeah. And then we go on to the Master. One other thing about executive meddling. Because, because Naval of Cast Paul began, they had to hire, and you won't be able to see this, but I'm going to do the finger quotes, name actor to be the Master. So they went with Eric Roberts, who you may remember from... He was a, in the Dark Knight. Can't remember his name in it, but he was in it. I remember him more as the villain from The Expendables, honestly, but still. He was a quote-unquote name actor, whatever the hell that means, I guess. And, in all honesty, his performance is probably the worst, though it's hilarious and fun to watch first hour of the movie when he's the master he's just basically a terminator clone and <laughs> he can't go past it he has the glasses he has the jacket he has the slick back hair he barely talks and when he does he talks almost like he's trying to hide his emotion or just vent out hatred and towards the last half hour when he puts on the goofy robe he, he's just ha he's captain ham yelling and just screaming. Every time he talks, he's, it translates to "I'm acting." It's that, che it's that cheese worthy and great in terms of bad performances. Uh, it's a little weird because Paul McGann's actually putting a good performance in, while his arch nemesis in the story is acting insanely goofy. It's kind of off-putting, and it really clashes. But he serves his purpose. Axe evil, gets defeated, blah, 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 blah. Again, I really do think if they showed him... With, just show a little pain, because he honestly just treated it as, I want your body, why? Well, I'll just apparently die over in like a millisecond any time, so please. Another thing about this is the way it looks. It looks pretty good for a mid-90s show, but it got killed in the ratings. Mostly because, yet again, Fox screwed with it. They put it in the middle of sweeps, going against a very special episode of Roseanne. Cool! One, my sister responded with coolness on that one. My mom would. Oh, yeah. Yeah, our mom would, wouldn't she? Yes. Anyway. <laughs> I'm making a sign, people! She don't, they don't need to know. Anyway. So, yes. If you really look at it, Doctor Who was killed... By Roseanne. Awesomeness. Ignore her. No. People love me, you know. I can cut you out. Anyway. Sure. sure, sure. Anyway. So, yeah. It didn't do too well in the U.S. And because of that, we never got a series. Sure. And honestly, counting as a blessing. Because we, we would probably not have the show now. And all the great actors who played the Doctor after him again. So, it's a bit of a mixed blessing. This is not a great movie. It's kind of a little over average, with the exception of the master performances are okay. All the background characters don't really bother me because they don't matter. They're just there to kind of point out little plot conveniences. And also, I just don't know. The setting was... 
in 2000, even though this was 1996. I have no idea why. There's no real specific reason why it has to be there. There's just so many questions that make little to no sense. There's a couple plot holes. But I at least recommend checking it out. Uh, it's not worth a buy. Um, though the bonus features on the special edition disc are amazing. Um, other than that, um, that's all. I'll see you people in the next video. What do you mean, see?